Hello friends, welcome to today's video where we're going over all the results from this past weekend's events happening around the world in the VGC community. So this is something that I'm going to try and do going forward. Coverage of all the events and their results after the events have actually happened. So we can take a recap of the teams that have been used. We can follow the metagame as it's going forward and actually celebrate the champions from these events. So we had a lot of events happening over the past weekend. We had the international challenge happening online, which was also kind of part of the Japan national qualifying event, as well as CP for the rest of the world. So championship points were available for the rest of the world, as well as that we had a special event happening over in Bilbao. And then we had the Indianapolis regional happening over in the States. So lots going on this weekend. Streams for both the Bilbao special event and the Indianapolis regional, which is pretty cool. So there was a lot to kind of watch over the entire weekend and also we had like i say the international challenge which you could take part in if you weren't at these events in real life but we're now seeing after the eu internet where we saw eric win with their arena son that team we were probably expecting to still kind of carry on he won liverpool regionals with it he won frankfurt with it as well and we were probably thinking that's going to be the trend carrying on but it was a bit of a different story over this past weekend kick off first with the results from the Bilbao special event. So Bilbao special event, obviously this was taking place, all these events happening over the 7th and 8th of May uh, 2022, if you're watching this at a later date. Um, but as you can see here on your screen, we have the top eight and uh, it was actually won by Jonas Vigel. So uh, a German player, he's been playing a very long time and Jonas is a great guy. Uh, so really nice to see him get another regional win under his belt. Before super well an interesting team combination here and you know the Rinya Sun team is really nowhere to be seen in this top eight we do have some Zashian Groudon teams in here but overall it is kind of flooded with Zashian and Kai Olga obviously Jonas the only one that didn't run that predominantly in the top eight he chose the Calyrex Shadow Rider and the Kyoga and then you've got the Lander Asterion the Rillaboom the Whimsicott and the Thunder Asterion so we can see a bit more of a rise with the kind of the double genie cores here at least the genies are picking up a bit more popularity and that's one thing I did not you know when generally used to seeing Whimsicott have a really strong showing in a lot of successful teams but Tornado is picking up a lot more use here and as you can see in the top eight you've got it on Antonio's team you got uh oriol with that as well and then we go further down is that the last one in the top eight it is but a lot of thunderous here which is a big thing you know it's really good pokemon especially with the assault vest uh, if you're going down the defiant route where you can go for those big max air streams max lightning to threaten things like kyoga threaten the kind of the sun mode of the team as well so you've got a lot of options there and i do personally really like landorus so nice to see jonas winning with the landorus combination there with that uh, thunderous but calyrex winning one of its first events i say i think one of its first major events so really nice to see that doing well it's another pokemon that's picking up a lot of usage recently especially paired alongside things like zashian and that would be something that you would see paired with whimsicott as well you know piloted with that fake tears um whimsicott and the calyrex with the tailwind support there it's a very strong combination as well and that kind of supports other things like the kyogre as well but very surprised to see no Rinya Sun in top eight but it makes sense the format the metagame is kind of shifting at the minute as we get closer to the other big events in the circuit that we've got coming up this season so um big shout out to all our players but there are some notable things obviously we've got a Snorlax here at number seventh and Frank there from France running the Snorlax which is an interesting Pokemon to see especially in top eight and then you know we've got that Sogaleo and Calyrex as well there from Div um, which is another really strong combination. So got a mix of it. The Lunala appearance there from Juan is really nice as well. I think Lunala got a lot of potential in this format. So nice to see Juan getting a lot of kind of a really deep run with it and just missing out on top four. But they're the teams we see from the Bilbao special event. Next, we'll move over and we'll have a look at the results from the Indianapolis Regional Championships 
from this weekend. So you can see here the top eight. We've got uh, Stefan Mott Pengi winning the event. So amazing result from Stefan and just a great team, really. It's a team that we saw earlier on in the format, you know, performing super well. Uh, the likes of Joy UX9 piloted very similar six to this or the exact six to this in one of the Victory Road tournaments and won that. Um, so it's nice to see that team not going away and the utilization of Zapdos as well with just a really solid call behind it. Um, I think says a lot for Stefan and the way he's played this tournament. When you look at the teams below as well that have kind of cropped up, it's a very different feel from the Bilbao special event. You can see the variation with the two different regions here. Uh, the um, the Calyrex Ice Rider and, and Reshiram team is, is a, another interesting one that has picked up a lot of popularity at this event. It's starting to be used like a lot. You've got Leonard here with it in seventh place, and then you've got Jeremy as well running it here to very good success, obviously into the finals um, with that combination as well. Different builds from both players, but the same kind of concept, I guess, running through the team. Uh, other interesting team is Alex Underhill's um, third place team for a from top four with the the Kali Ice and Palkia. So Kali Ice really being used uh, very effectively in this tournament. Uh, you can see it's got a very strong showing here. So between that and the, the Shadow Rider, where the Ice Rider is just kind of tipping it out with uh, a usage of three in the, the top eight here and the Shadow Rider got uh, just two representations. But again, the big thing here going into this tournament is Rinya Sun is just really nowhere to be seen the the closest we've got to that kind of classic Rinyasun core is the the team that austin run but he's got he's got the the calorex shadow rider over the zashin and there's no gastrodon here he's got the venusaur which plays into the sun mode a little bit better so a bit more of a sun team with the calorex super nice build interesting to see how well that's done and how deep that got in the tournament and you can see here that calorex feels i think when you like take a comparison between both events how powerful and dominant those two Pokemon are starting to become in the format. Again, you're still seeing that the top team is going to carry the Kyogre there. So that's really no change to anything else. And, and Zashi and Kyogre being the kind of the top team at the event says a lot about the, the call. It is probably still the, the strongest combination, but there are a lot of different combinations that we're seeing getting a lot of success uh, that, that players can kind of fall back on. Interesting to see uh, Paul Ruiz doing in here, uh, sneaking in at sixth place here with a team that he also ran earlier in the season. I'm pretty sure that is the, the Victory Road team that he ran. I think it was the first Victory Road Series 12 tournament where he got second place in that tournament. So doing well with that core, I'm sure it's different from the original build, but still having a very effective impact on the format like it did back it is the beginning almost so almost coming full circle but the 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 big thing the takeaway here i think is the the reshiram and the calorex kind of combination the calorex ice rider combination it saw a lot of success from a particular player in euic playing that team and um it is kind of carrying over now into the format and doing super well so they're the results you can see got a bunch of different teams but a, a nice variety and i think that's the beauty about series 12 here where we do have uh, a, such a variety of different pokemon in the format where it's not like previous years where we've got a really dominant team and i know we've had that recently with the rinya sun but i put that more down to probably eric uh, on his own than anything else with that team uh, but we are seeing a massive diversity within uh, within the successful teams at tournaments which I think says a lot for the for the former and uh, keeps it from being super stale so the next kind of tournament we're going to just briefly look at we don't have a, a massive amount of information but we can go over to Liberty Note here who have collated a bunch of data on um, some of the, the top performing teams from the International Challenge over the weekend we've got Ege who is is at cycleshop underscore i on twitter a japanese player who topped out the rankings on the weekend with a, a zashi and kyoga team really interesting build there with the body press uh, bronze on weakness policy incineroar there as well and focus sash landorus which does not have any protect either so an interesting build but massive congratulations to Ege and uh, he'll have locked up his um, place at the Japan National Championships with this result so that's super nice no information for second place team here um, and then we go down to third place another Zashin Kyoga uh, with Tornadus in there as well you can see so Tornadus 
becoming a lot more popular now. You're seeing no real Whimsicott kind of popping alongside these teams as we were doing. So that's kind of a little bit of a shift in itself. Uh, still offers a lot of the sim similar sort of things that Whimsicott does offer, obviously with that Prankster Tailwind, Prankster Taunt if you want it there, but it does have a bit more of an offensive threat to it with those Hurricanes and it does make for a decent Maxmon as an alternative in your team uh, if, if, you, if you need it rather than Whimsicott that you kind of don't really want to rely to be a maximon in most situations uh, then going down you can see fourth place zash and kyoga zash and kyoga in fifth from miluka so he, again another very strong finish in another one of these international challenges from him and then we have to go right down to seventh place before we do see that Rinya Sun team pop up but still proving to be a very strong choice in the format obviously the ICs are a little bit different from in real life events the best of one on the ladder so it is a lot down to to luck of who you come up against and and having that luck in the tournament that's going to carry you to these points but don't take anything away from these top performing players they still got to have the consistency with the team to get the points that they've kind of accumulated to get these positions in the end um and then we go down a little bit further you can see that there's a ground on calorex and then yeah we've got a ground on kyoga which is an interesting build here um with a scyther in which is like unheard of really but doing super well getting that high score total in 14th place in the rankings and then we got more Rinya Sun and like I say at the minute we haven't really got all the data for all of these teams from the players that have placed well but you've got some the further we go down the more variation we're going to get in teams obviously Dialga and Zashin a, a combination that's picking up a lot of usage and seeing a lot more play recently as well um, so that's that's an interesting point to see. You can see Calorex coming in there, more Zashin and Dialga, and then we go down. The further we go down, like I say, you know, you've got some interesting teams. This is an interesting one in 29th as well with the the Xerneas and the Zygarde, and you can go down. I'll link this down in the description below. We could go down this list forever and go over the the odd teams that we're seeing kind of be used and utilized by players, but very interesting nonetheless. So the th last thing to do is look at events coming up so we've kind of covered the results so far briefly went over the teams the next events that we have due up in the the format are going to be the 21st and 22nd of May and that is the Lille regional championships over in Europe so that is a regional for Lille um and then we're going to have the also the Perth regionals as well over in Oceania the same weekend and also we have a US regional happening Sarcasus, I think that's how we're pronouncing it. I really apologize if not. I think it's in New Jersey though. I'm pretty sure. Um, I could be wrong, but they're all happening over the 21st and 22nd of May. Um, so there are next events. I'm sure there'll be streams for these events. Um, I don't know if anything's been confirmed for Lille yet, but I'm pretty sure there will be coverage. Hopefully there will be for these events when they are happening. But they're the next big events that we're looking forward to in just under a couple of weeks time. I uh, unfortunately had a ticket for Lille to go and participate, but unfortunately work would not allow me the time off so I can't get over to the event which I'm very sad about so I would have really loved to have compete over there um, but unfortunately I have to try and see if I can get to an event later on in the season there are plenty of events still to come this season that we'll be able to take part in but those are the next ones uh, that we'll be looking out for in the results and see what the format looks like after those hope you've enjoyed this sort of video do let me know down in the comment section below uh what your thoughts are on the kind of the the setup of these if you like them if you'd like to go on a bit more in depth with the teams and things like that i think just having a quick snapshot talking about them briefly and then kind of going on to see what the next events are is a nice way to keep track of the the, the tournament the championship series as well and have a look at the format how it's kind of developing it gives us a little snapshot into what is going on at the moment but massive congratulations to all our top uh, placing players in each of these events over the weekend and uh, it'll be nice to see like I say where the format kind of goes from here as we approach those next events those regionals on the 21st of May which is really exciting 
Thank you so much for tuning in, friends. Have a great rest of your day. I look forward to hopefully seeing some feedback about these videos. This is the first one that we're doing like it's kind on the channel. So I'm kind of just getting the feelers, putting the feelers out to see if this is something you'd like to see continued. I'll continue it, but it'd be nice to get some feedback nonetheless. And I appreciate each and every one of you that takes the time to do that as always. So thank you again for tuning in. Have a great rest of your day and I will see you for some more content on the channel very soon. So until then, take care and bye-bye.